Hi, I'm Craig, and welcome back to another on the road video brought to you by Appliancevideo.com. Today we have a Maytag built in dishwasher. The complaint was that it was leaking out of the right side of the dishwasher. Upon inspection, we found that there was a crack in the right side of the tub. So today we're going to be basically replacing the stainless steel tub and moving all the components over. The tools you will need to complete this repair is a quarter inch nut driver, 5 16 inch nut driver, 3 8 inch nut driver, small flathead screwdriver, large flathead screwdriver, a pair of adjustable pliers, and a pair of locking pliers. To start this repair, we will begin by removing the racks. Start with the bottom rack, since it's not held in with any screws. Now that the bottom rack is removed, we can remove the top rack. You pull the dishwasher rack all the way out. Flip the two caps out. This will allow you to pull the wheels out of the track. Next, we'll push the glides back in and start by removing the four bolts that are 5 16 on the side that holds in the glides. So you will need to repeat the process on the opposite side. Next, we'll reinstall the glides onto the new tub. I'd recommend holding it from the inside and hand tightening the bolts back in. Repeat the same step on the opposite side. Now, we will remove the door seal from around the edges. Remove the front door latch by pressing down on the two tabs and pulling forward. Now we will reinstall the latch into the new tub by sliding in until the tabs lock in place. Put the seal around the edges. I'd recommend starting on the bottom and sliding it up. Now, we'll release the side wall mount covers on both sides by pressing in on the tabs and pushing out. Replace the tabs on each side of the new tub in order to prevent leaks. We've laid the dishwasher on its back, took plenty of pictures of where all the Molex connectors go, and we're going to start releasing those connections to disassemble the sump. This one has a bracket you'll want to push in at the top and pull out to release this. These wiring harnesses go directly to the heating element. This is for the turbidity sensor. Now you got your main motor Molex, which is right here. We want to disconnect this ground wire with a quarter inch nut driver. Next, we'll remove the wiring from the junction box. To remove this connector, you'll press in on the tabs and push out. Now, just go around the edges and make sure you disconnect all of the wiring from the harnesses.
And finally, release the wiring harness from the drain pump. Next, we are gonna remove the hinge assembly by pushing down on the spring to release the tension. Pull the lines out and off. Then you'll have two 5 16 screws Then you will have to twist this in order to release the tab and pull out. Repeat the same steps on the opposite side. The next step will be putting the unit upright and removing the door. Be careful so that it does not fall on the ground. Just open up, pull out to release it from the hinges and set the door aside. While the unit is upright, we'll release the spray arm and the top spray assembly. To release the bottom spray arm, there will be tabs. All you have to do is turn and pull up. While releasing the top spray arm assembly, be sure to disattach the harnesses that are holding it in place. Pull it to the side. And pull out. We remove the drain pump by turning, pressing in on the bottom clip, and pulling out. Now, we remove the water valve and the hoses. Start by untightening the quarter inch on the top. Push the valve down to release it. Remove the clamp and water line attached to the bottom. Remove the insulation to gain access to the float switch. Pull up to release these tabs. Next, we remove the float switch by releasing these two tabs here, pulling out, releasing this tab, and pulling out. You'll want to pull off the mechanism here and push up on the float rod to clear the tab, then pull out. To get the float switch out, you wanna use your pliers to loosen the bolt, twist it off, and pull through the bottom, and make sure not to lose the rubber seal. Now, remove the water and drain line from the side by unclipping the drain hose from the top and releasing the locking mechanism on the side, and pull out. Now to transfer over the sump, you need to release these tabs by pushing in. It may be kind of stiff when you first try to push it because the seal push in on this tab and carry it through the inside. To remove the wheel, you need a 3 8 inch nut driver or bit. and repeat the same step on the opposite side. Now that we have removed all of the components from the old dishwasher tub, we have previously installed the seal, the inner rails, and the door latch. We will start by reassembling this dishwasher with the wheels on the back. When installing the wheel, use your hand to secure it into the center hole first, then tighten it up with a 3 8 inch nut driver. Repeat the same step on the opposite side. To reinstall the float switch, simply put it in. Your seal goes at the bottom of the float switch. Put the nut on. Tighten it by hand, followed by one quarter turn with your wrench. Now, once you have that secured, push the float switch rod in until you hear it click. To reinstall the sump, simply go from the inside, bring the motor down first, and use the notch to push back in the drain hose. Secure it on there, and refasten the tabs. 
Now we will reinstall the drain pump. Make sure the tab is in the back. Push down to secure the seal and twist until it clips. Now when reinstalling the drain line, go in from the top so that you can secure the drain line into the clip. Push it inside the notch here with the seal on the outside of the dishwasher and re-secure the nut. Now we will move back down to the bottom to reinstall the hoses. When reinstalling the drain hose, simply push in. Make sure you push all the way to the tabs to keep from getting water leaks. Use an adjustable wrench, pliers, whatever you have to push down on the clip so that it seals well. To reinstall the water valve, simply push your hose back all the way up. Use your pliers to re-secure the hose clamp. Next, slide the water valve into the slotted spot all the way up and use your quarter inch nut driver to put back in the screw. Now we'll reinstall the back spray arm, put it in place so that the bottom is fed through the hole, pull it forward so that it clips into place, reposition your back, snap that in and then snap in the top until it clips. When reinstalling the bottom spray arm, you will notice you have four clips. Simply center it, push it down, and turn it until it clips into place. To install the door, line up on one side and then line up on the opposite side. Make sure you put it on the inner slots. Steady it and push down to clip it into place. Now that our door is in place, we will refer back to the placement harness pictures that you took earlier and start to reconnect our wiring harnesses. I would start here at the top, make sure that it goes in to the slots provided. Next, put in your water valve. Followed by your ground screw. This will be a quarter inch nut driver. Resecure the harness for your drain pump. Your float switch. The junction box. motor on the bottom, turbidity sensor, your heating element, then finally re-secure all the wires back in the harness clips. We'll temporarily keep off the cover for the junction box until the dishwasher has been reinstalled. To complete your repair, we'll reinstall the hinge assemblies. You notice at the top has a small notch. Simply slide that in and turn it and line it up to the center screw hole. Replace your 5 16 screw. Now put the top wheel back on and replace the top 5 16 screw. Now reinstall your spring by sliding in the top slot, twine through the bottom wheel till it clicks. Stretch it and secure into the bottom hole. Repeat the process on the opposite side. Now that all the components are installed, 
you can reinstall your dishwasher. Thank you for watching another quality video brought to you by appliancevideo.com.